Today we are at the Courtright Center for Conservation to immerse ourselves in nature and learn some survival skills. We are here with the general manager, Adrian O'Driscoll. Tell us about this beautiful property. Yeah, we're situated on 555 acres. It's a natural oasis, just about 10 minutes north of Toronto. We have the Humber River on our west side of our property. We also have 16 kilometers worth of trails, nature trails that they meander through mature maple sugar bush forests. They also have meadows and fields and also wetlands for people to enjoy and explore. Along with all of this space, you also lead over 50 educational programs. Can you talk about some of those programs for us? Absolutely, yeah. So we have our curriculum linked programs, which are mainly for field trips for elementary students and secondary students, as well as homeschoolers. We also run a private school here at the Courtright Centre called the Nature School, where we have a preschool and a K-3 to school that operates from September to June. Um, we also have family experience programs and different festivals and events that we run annually. You may be familiar with or heard about the Maple Syrup Festival that we run here. It's a great Canadian tradition that a lot of people explore and enjoy. Like you mentioned, this place is great for all ages. And a program that you offer here is called Fresh Air Fridays. And I love that you're trying to get the kids away from their screens. Why is that so important to you? Well, we found since uh, the pandemic, there's been a lot of people spending a lot of time on screens. So we came up with a concept called Fresh Air Fridays, where instead of being connected to the internet and connected to the screens, you can connect with nature instead. This is based on forest school pedagogy and forest school programming. We have a suite of programs called the Nature School. All of our programs are inquiry based, so the students are really, it, they're driving their own learning. So when they have an interest in something, like a frog, we can integrate the school curriculum and other uh, things into that. Your mission here at Courtright is to instill an appreciation for the natural world and one of those ways is learning and teaching people about renewable resources and energy resources as well. Tell us about that. Yeah so here at the Courtright Centre we're an environmental education facility but we also have a focus on renewable and sustainable technologies. And we have some infrastructure in place that assists us in teaching people about those concepts. Everything from geothermal, uh, wind energy, photovoltaics and solar energy, among other things. We have an Archetype Sustainable House, which has plug and play technologies, which help, to, uh, help people to learn about the sustainable technologies that are on the market today and, then, and that are upcoming. We have an off-grid learning center, which is a sustainable energy cottage. We also have a 1.6 kilometer trail called the Innovation Trail that has a lot of different displays and interactive ways to engage students and professionals and families in learning about these concepts so they can be uh, sustainable citizens, they can reduce their carbon footprint and reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. Jasmine Green, a teacher here at the Nature School at Courtright, and we are going to be learning a survival skill today, how to build a fire. But before we get into that, tell us what your day-to-day -day looks like here. Yeah, so at the Nature School at Courtright, kids gather. Um, usually when they first arrive, we have lots of loose parts out. We might have a fire going. Um, kids will put their bags in one of our bunkies or sometimes in our wigwam here. And um, they'll spend the morning just with free play. And then we usually gather for a fire, welcoming, checking on how all the kids are doing and then we're off into the forest and we're exploring, looking for different habitats, looking for animals or anything that might spark our interest for that day. Experiential learning is so important and you also offer outdoor family experiences and we're building a fire, but what other kind of experiences do you offer? Yeah, so our family experiences are great. It's an opportunity for families to come here and have a really intimate experience with one of our um, interpreters here. So we do things like pond dipping, birding, depending on the season, we've done maple syrup tours for families, again, for intimate family experiences. Um, and we do do shelter building, and as you said, fire building as part of our survival family experience. Um, but we have a lot of different offerings and it really depends on the season and the time of year and what families are looking for. Well, Jasmine, you are my teacher for today, and I am your student, and I am ready to learn how to make a good fire. So let's do it. All right, let's do it.
So the first thing you're gonna need is some tinder. So tinder is the stuff that burns really quickly that you can light really fast. So at home, that might be newspaper, any type of paper material. But in the forest, that's gonna be birch bark, or maybe you find um, some mullein or some feathers or an old nest that's really dried out. These are the types of things, I put a match on that, it's gonna light no matter what. Whereas if you put a match on something like this, it would take a while. It would take a while. So that's your tinder. You're gonna to wanna to find that. And once you have your tinder, you're gonna put that in the center of your, um, of your fire. So here's my fire where I'm gonna build it, and here's my tinder. So I place that in the, in the middle. So you've got your tinder, and then you wanna go and find your bigger pieces. So that's your kindling. So again, in the forest, that's gonna be smaller pieces of wood, um, sticks and branches that are really dry, and that's the key. You don't want things that are living, so no green on them, because that means they have moisture inside. And that means a smoky fire. And that means a smoky fire, that's I right. I don't like. <laughs> And then once you have your kindling, you want to find your fuel. And your fuel is what keeps your fire going. Those are your large logs. Looks like it's starting. Great work. Yay! We made a successful fire. We're going to wait for the fire to build a bit more, and then you can't have a fire without some s'mores. If you want to learn some survival skills or about renewable energy or even spend some time with your family in nature, go to courtright.org. Mm.